edition of CX Green Room. It is a mashup with the Genesis Podcast Tech Talks in 20, and we are coming to you live from Enterprise Connect. I'm Ginger Conlin. I'm Michael Logan, co-host of Tech Talks in 20, but today I get to pretend to be a host of CX Green Room, which I'm extremely excited about. I'm a huge fan, but now I actually be being part of it is great. So that's not the only exciting thing we have for you today. We also have brought some, we're going to bring you some really interesting insights from what's going on here at Enterprise Connect, not only from our Genesis leadership, but from CX executives and industry analysts. We have a lot to share with you, so stay tuned. We are going to talk about AI, of course, because it's a hot topic on everyone's it's mind. That's all anyone talks about. We're going to talk about employee engagement strategies. We're going to talk about blending EX and CX strategies and so much more. We're also going to talk about how on TX Green Room you get treats for joining the show and today we have some wonderful Genesis branded M&Ms which I've had way too many of already. But, but that's with, how it goes. That's how it goes. So in order to get this thing kicked off we caught up with Josh Goldlust earlier, earlier today to bring us some more insights on his session that he had earlier. Welcome Josh. So, okay, AI is a hot topic, as we know, at Enterprise Connect here and pretty much everywhere. So let's start there. So what are examples of the most notable ways that AI is already delivering business benefits related to customer and employee experience? Yep. Thank you, Ginger. Yeah, AI really has been the topic of all sorts of conversations uh, across all the conversations that we've had here today. Um, it, it really is important as we think about modifying conversations from really being more transactional to being much more much more interactive. Uh, we, we've seen it already in uh, in having conversation summaries, so really taking agents away and having to focus on documenting the conversations that have happened and really being able to focus on the one-to-one -one conversations, really letting the, the technology do the summarization immediately. We also find it a lot of times on the, on the back end. So how can it use the intelligence of who is engaging in the conversation, where did it start, and using it for intelligent routing. So there's a lot of places that we've seen it already and definitely uh, a lot of exciting excitement about where it's going to go. What is one misconception or obstacle in terms of AI that's stalling progress that CX leaders can like rethink to get past that obstacle and keep moving forward? The AI, just a simple two letters, but it seems so complex. And so I'd say one of the biggest misconceptions is that you really have to have it perfected before you launch. And so for a lot of this, there's a lot of value that companies can get right away from taking simple steps, whether it is for self-service or, or using a knowledge portal or being able to expose knowledge automatically to, to your agents. So there's definitely a lot of places you can start small, start to gain the benefit, and then really start to change some of the processes that you, that you wind up having. It doesn't have to be an all or nothing. So you participated in a session about AI and the employee experience. What is one way that companies can personalize the employee experience using AI? Yeah, personalization is definitely really big, really big with Genesis. Uh, a lot of that will come through really being able to understand the, the who's having the conversation, what journey that they've had coming in, and then really being able to tailor that conversation and the information that's used in the conversation to that, to that person. Uh, we also find a lot of this can be uh, used as part of our supervisory functions. So being able to understand uh, really the types of conversations that they've had, um, are there coaching opportunities, are there ways that they can you know, perfect some of those conversations for, for future? Genesis research found that 72% of consumers are worried that organizations using AI for customer service and the customer experience might make it difficult to reach a human. At the same time, 50% believe that by 2030, no one will care whether they're interacting with a human or a bot as long as they get their issue resolved. So in the meantime, how can organizations allay those consumer fears that AI might you know, block their ability to reach a human agent? Yeah, again, great, great question. You know, AI can seem really big and scary, both to CX leaders as well as consumers. So it, it, it really behooves us as we're thinking about ways that we can roll out AI um, in our organizations, really to start to design the experiences with intentionality. 
what's the type of experience that you're looking for, and then use the technology to then decide, have you met that experience or, or not? And, and the reason why I phrase it that way is, going into this, you could be not expecting that you're going to have a deflection strategy which could turn off your, your consumers or your users. But again, if you're being able to design it that you want to have that highly engaging when it matters most, when customers are expecting to have that engagement, I think you can go into it that way and make sure that you're, you're meeting those expectations. And, and being very upfront with customers to make sure they always have that option to use the technology fully or be able to opt out and, and engage with the human. Josh, thanks so much for joining us in the CX Green Room and sharing your insights. Absolutely love it, thanks for having me. The conference theme is all about keeping that forward momentum with customer experience transformation. And in order to find out more about that, we asked some of our industry analysts and consultants to tell us where they think AI is going to play a role in the future, to 2030 and beyond. So, in five years, I think that the customer experience is going to be much better at supporting different channels. I think that customers will be much better supporting either voice, but also any digital channel of their, of their choice. And I think that the, or I hope, that the journey will be tied together so that once they get to a point where they do have to talk to a live human, the human has the information from all the previous stuff to be able to actually answer their questions. When I envision a customer experience five years out, I would hope that it's an easy experience. I would hope that whatever automation, whatever AI tools, or whatever people are presenting to the customer is almost invisible. Because right now, with a lot of things, for example, medical check-in and, and registrations, we're actually putting a lot of administrative burden on customers. So being able to recognize the customer and their intent would be the ideal, to be able to have a, a perfect customer experience, to know what they want, and know who they are, and to serve them quickly. Wow, so for customers, it's all about in five years time, it's obviously AI that's going to be in the mix. Right now we're in this hype cycle to the nth degree, okay, uh, you know, with AI. It's here at the show, it's very dominant, obviously. And AI will definitely play a place, have a place in the next five years, uh, medium to large in that space, but I think Especially now that customer experience is front and center. In fact, as the industry is changing, the word contact center is going away. Now it's all about CX. So what's going to happen is, I think customers' expectations are going to continue to go up. Why? Because we've got all these feedback forms and you're measuring you know, scales of one to five, et cetera. So in five years, it's always going to be about, you have to have enough staff and you have to have enough smart AI built into the process to really handle as to what's going to happen going forward in terms of, again, measuring your environment. And I think you shared with me last year a slide that showed that on the voice side, customer experience actually measured down from two years prior. So again, you know, the expectations of customers are just going to continue to increase and we have to be very cognizant of that in the next few years for sure. Uh, so customer or employee experience about five years from now, I'd say simplification is the name of the game. Just simplifying the agent's um, needs to, uh, in order to serve your customers the right way, simplifying your customer's uh, process to, to getting to the agent, getting what they need, and getting it through. You know, the shorter the times are for your agent and your customer, the happier they're both going to be, the better your success is going to be. What is the state of AI in customer experience in 2030? I, I greatly hope that it is basically making humans into superhumans and agents into super agents in the sense that it's empowering people without replacing them. I think that the easy stuff, the low hanging questions, the stuff that's easy to do, AI will handle that. But I think that in the important stuff where people are have complexity or have emotional issues with the like in a healthcare situation or something like that that the agents are there to provide the empathy and the human interaction that's needed and then the AI is behind them actually empowering them with the right answers. Wow, 2030, so seven years from now. Okay, so there's some speculation depending upon which vendor you talk to. Some will say that AI is going to take over the world and no more agents. I don't believe it. I really believe that 
agents will get smarter with AI tools. We've proven that already today. Uh, there's a whole bunch of uh, discussion around copyright and other things, hurdles that we have to go through as an industry as we go forward. So seven years from now, I think you're going to see AI very much a part of the landscape, but it's not going to replace the agent. It just won't. But it will be another way to measure the entire customer experience you know, within that whole domain. So I think we need to look forward to it. I think we need to embrace AI. We need to be a little bit cautious to make sure it's accurate. Uh, we've seen actually some lawsuits already up in Canada that uh, information that was presented uh, Canada, this one airline took a, a nonchalant, like, no, it's not our fault, even though we had an AI bot that said you could do something, and they didn't, uh, and they, they lost in case. So yeah, we're going to see things like this. But again, brace a, embrace AI, start small, bring it into your entire contact center, like start using a, as an IVR bot, you know, just something simple like that. And, uh, you know, don't be afraid of it because, again, it's really, if you think about it, it's just the next gen of where a contact center was 20 years ago, right? IVR's been around, what, 20, 30 years. We were really concerned about something self-service then. Now we're getting into it again. So it's just embrace it. That's the, that's the whole answer, you know? So thank you. Ooh, that's a tough one. What is the state of AI and customer experience in 2030? <clears throat> I think and I hope that there will still be live agents I hope that they will be fully empowered to manage first call resolution, and I actually hope that AI tools like Agent Assist are so advanced on recognizing the questions and queries that they help the agents learn their jobs better and become more valuable to the company. I really hope that it does not replace humans. Um, in some cases, I think it should, like uh, very basic questions like what are your store hours or can I check my balance? Obviously those are good cases, but in general, and you don't need AI for that, so I'll, I'll backtrack a little, but I hope that AI is empowering people to be better employees and to provide better customer service. Okay. AI and customer experience in 2030, I, I'd see over the next six years a slow, gradual integration and um, exploration into AI and, and as the AI gets better and as uh, you know there's there's less risk and there's um, it's more successful I see it slowly taking a bigger and bigger role in, in both uh, agent and customer experience. Well AI is pretty much not topic. It's it is all over the place. But it is not the only topic. No, right? no another really hot topic here at the conference is employee experience, and we happen to catch up with Natalie DeCellis to talk about that and more. So we're joined by Natalie. She was participating in a session earlier talking about, among many things, how, well, your specialty is, a, is employee experience. Correct. So let's start there. All right. All right. So when we think about employee experience, what do you think is the biggest driver over the next couple of years for productivity and just workload, what, what, what is going to impact the workforce over the next several years? Well, I think as we think about um, business habits and, and behaviors, our budgets are all pretty stagnant. Um, we're not seeing additional budget uh, being implemented, implemented to uh, specific initiatives. So how do you do more with less? Or more is kind of what you have. Um, and that's the role that AI is going to play, I think, for all of our employees that work across CX um, within an organization. So for the main part, it's going to be your agents. How do you think about upskilling them, onboarding them faster, um, helping them with post-call work, after-call work? Uh, there's a lot there that we can do with generative AI to help them speed up after-call work, uh, things like auto summarization, or even in the moment with things like agent assist where you know, if you have somebody new that's onboarded, um, how do you make sure that they learn quickly your processes? Uh, the answers to really tough questions, that's where AI is going to help. It's going to be really critical and giving them the answers that they need in the real time so that you don't have sort of friction within that customer experience during an engagement. So you're saying uh, the ROI on that is using AI solutions like that can give you a greater impact on the workforce because you can get more done with less. Exactly, exactly. And we've actually seen a lot of quantifiable impact there. We've saved about, I think, five minutes of after call work for one of our early adopters of auto summarization. I mean, when you think about five minutes across all of your agents, right? That means you're getting customers faster through the queue, interactions get a little bit faster, um, and so you can handle a lot more capacity uh, with your current agent kind of workload that you have. 
What's the most notable benefit to businesses that are using AI now to support their employees? Oh, no, so much, right? I mean, where do you want to start? Um, we talked a lot about agent and the impact to the agent specifically, but when I kind of pivot to your supervisors, what do we have going on there, right? Um, there's a lot of things that need to be done around post-call quality assurance and kind of quality management there. So when you think about those evaluations that have to happen, how do we use AI to evaluate the interactions that take place? positive sentiment, negative sentiment, how is the agent being helpful or unhelpful, putting that through your kind of quality evaluation in an unbiased way, right? Where you're not having a supervisor kind of put their perceptions, their perspectives on something, you're letting AI do a lot of that work, and all they have to do is kind of put that manual oversight on top of that. Um, check, 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 you're done, and kind of continuing on that process. So we talk about employees a lot, and we usually focus on the contact center agent, and we don't talk about supervisors enough. Rarely, very rarely. What else, We're, well, it's not just the supervisor, where else does it stop? Oh What's my goodness, oh my goodness. We think about um, insights and analytics, right? So um, the thing that I also like to talk about is kind of your speech and text analytics, what you can deduce there, so applying some generative AI, to that analysis that's happening, you can do what, the, what we're calling these post-call summaries or post-interaction summaries. Um, and they're going to give you the hot topics. Uh, they're going to give you the aggregate reason for call, right? And it's going to be nuanced as it needs to be. It's not just going to be positive or negative. It's not just going to be uh, bill or no bill. It's going to be, well, they maybe had a few nuances that they were dealing with, something around mm, a specific claim, around a topic that maybe you guys aren't covering really, really well in terms of what your knowledge and upskilling are of your agents. And so when you think about doing things at scale, AI is really going to help you kind of drive these insights that are needed to progress optimization within your contact center. All right, you mentioned hot topics. We're at Enterprise Connect. Everything yeah. here seems like a hot topic. Yeah, very but good. <laughs> with everything that, that you've seen and heard this week, what are some of the things that are standing out for you that's going to be the most impactful to contact centers over the next several years? I think it's how you do this quickly, right? Um, the hot topic is AI. Where do you start, right? What do you have to do? Um, number one, obviously, if you're not on a cloud solution, I would say get to a cloud solution that's going to help you kind of look at your data differently, um, the way that machine learning models can kind of pull that data in a push and pull model across your entire CX tech stack is going to be really, really critical. Um, so that's going to be number one. Um, number two is then, once you're there, what kind of vendor do you have? What kind of system do you have? Making sure it's kind of all encompassing because, because of the pace of AI and because of the pace of how quickly things are changing, if you can't spin up features quickly to help you optimize where you need to, you're going to be back to an RFP starting all over from scratch, right? So you really want to make sure you're on cloud in sort of an all-in-one solution that's going to let you adopt innovation as quickly that you need to to keep up with where things are going. You know, you brought up a, an important fact there. So we talk a lot about how being on a cloud solution clearly is important, but you, we don't talk enough about data. We, know, we don't manage data, but it takes data to drive AI. Mm -hmm. So let's say in the complete absence of data, yeah. say you can't get your hands on everything you need. I mean, wouldn't having a CX platform that drives your AI solution solve for some of that? Well, I would say it's you, you got to have a strong CX tech stack, right? So what, what does that mean? Well, the way that we think about it here at Genesis is really sort of that push and pull of data. You want to make sure that you're getting data from your critical CRMs, ERPs, all those places. But then within your system that you're generating a lot of data, that, the, that could push back into the machine learning models so that they have something to aggregate, something to analyze, right? When you think about the role of generative AI, it's creating something out of something, right? If you have nothing for it to create, you're kind of at zero. Um, so how do you make sure that you're pumping enough data into your CX system, that you're generating enough data, data within your CX system across voice, digital, bot interactions, analyzing them pro properly across positive, negative sentiment, um, what are your agents doing, how are they skilled, right? So that all of your sort of machine learning AI models are actually running enough data to give you an output that's optimized and that's beneficial for your business. Look at that, we're benefiting business, we're impacting business right here, live on the floor at Enterprise Connect yes. 2024. I want to thank you, Natalie. And you know, you're part of CX Green Room, and I'm fairly new to this CX Green Room stuff. I'm right. happy to be I'm part of it. Brand new, also. I'm brand new, also to this. First time. Two newbies, but you know what you get oh, as a guest? Tell me. You get M&Ms. M&Ms for me? What? Well, for us. For, oh, perfect, perfect. I mean, sharing is caring. So that, and they're branded colors. They're Where's branded colors. This? I love it. Thank you. What's this your favorite color? Wonderful. Oh, it has to be the navy blue. Navy blue Obviously. from Natalie. Obviously. All right, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Uh, we had seven finalists for this category. For this category, uh, they are AWS, Sayara, 
Genesis, MyRec, Nextiva, Nice, and Zoom. It's Sayara and Genesis. Uh, is our category for best innovation for customer experience. The finalists in this category are Cognigy, First Orion, Five9, Genesis, and Nextiva. And this award goes to Genesis. Well, you just saw here moments ago at Enterprise Connect in the general session, they just did some awards and we, Genesis. I say that we. Yes, we did. We accepted a couple of awards and here to tell us more is our Senior Vice President of Research and Development for Digital AI with Genesis, Joe Smith. Joe, tell us a little bit more about those awards we got and how we got there. Absolutely, so first of all, we got the best use of AI in, C in CX, which, you know, that's a phenomenal, recognition of what we've been doing over the last six years in AI when we started our AI practice in Genesis Cloud. And uh, then that led us to win um, Best Innovation for Customer Experience. And we're really happy about that too because they go hand in hand. They do go hand in hand. Now, let me ask you, was this something you've worked, you say you've worked on the AI for a while. You've known, tell us a little bit about how we got here with the AI. What are some of the things that you saw this year that really took us to that to get that achievement. Yeah, absolutely. So, we a number of years ago, five, four or five years ago, we saw that the critical thing was to have data on the platform energized to be able to build AI deeply connected to the, to the platform. Deeply connected to how we do routing, how we do digital targeting, how we do conversational AI, and how we, do, how we help the agent experience with AI. So if you saw this several years ago, you saw it coming. You knew what was going. What did you see back then that led you to this now? And then also, knowing that, what do you see moving forward as being the big trend for AI? Yeah, so energizing that data to make it real time so we can build bots, that we can do containment of your uh, less tricky conversations with your customers and only have your agents handle the hardest conversation with your customers and then help those agents handle those difficult questions in an empathetic way. And empathy is not about, oh, I'm sorry that happened to you. Empathy is about, I am moving as quickly as I can to actually solving your problem because I have all the context from what happened in the AI and my co-pilots is helping me right there and then with the next best action. And here's what that customer said last week when they called in about their problem. So you're moving very rapidly from what is your problem to fixing the customer's problem. That's true empathy. All right, so what's next then? What do you, in six years from now, when, when we win this again, we're going to win it every year. We're going to win it, we're, we're saving it. We're going to win it every year. Yeah. In six years when we win it again, what, 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 what's going to change from there? What are you guys working on for, what are we looking at in six years? Yeah, large language models are absolutely changing the game. They're helping uh, us handle more and more complex interactions with customers within bots as we move towards virtual agents, and then as those really complex conversations land on an agent desktop, large language models listening in every turn, suggesting next best action, pulling up data proactively for the agent, taking notes for the agent in real time, doing entity extraction, pushing those into backend systems proactively on behalf of the agent, so the agent is fully focused on the customer intent at all times. That's what's going to win it for us again. I can't wait until AI takes my place behind this mic at these events so that it sounds, it makes more sense, the stuff that we're doing? I'm not sure we're quite there. <laughs> not quite there, thank you. Uh, let me just ask one more question though, because I know some of our customers that, that we meet with, there's still the issue with not being able to garner all the data from their, from their organizations as they need to, yeah. right? It's still a struggle, because it's still siloed, it's still difficult for them to, to get their hands on to utilize in CS. What would you say to those that feel like they need to have all that data in place before they can make that evolution? Yeah, so we've been very cognizant of that as we built out our AR features. We want to have the data within the platform as much as possible um, so that you don't need an army of professional services to make AI work or an army of data scientists. We want to make you the driver of the car, not the mechanic under the hood. And uh, that's the way we've built all our features for AI. And as we go forward, we're, going, we're automating the ways we connect to the other pillars of pillar um, entities within your, your business, whether it's marketing automation, CRM, ERP, or whatever other system, 
CCAS is the other pillar of your organization. So being able to play nice through APIs, and when you do have to do data collection, we put SDKs and wrappers around that, so it's not a difficult lift to get that data into the platform to energize it for the use of AI for customer service. That's right, for evolution it's not that difficult. It's not a heavy lift, and that's what we want to, we want everyone to feel comfortable with that, and, and for all your hard work, I'm going to award you now with the uh, best of Enterprise Connect, most innovative use of AI. Yeah. Congratulations on all the hard work. Yeah, this is really nice to get on behalf of all my team who's been working hard on this for the last number of years. It's a fantastic recognition for us all, so thank you. Thank you. As we've discussed, AI is integral to both employee and customer experience, but it's not just about the AI, it's also about the data. And how do we get to that data and use it wisely? Absolutely, and so we caught up with our analysts and influencers and consultants and asked them, how can CX leaders get more from their customer data? What is one piece of advice on how CX leaders can get more value from customer data? I would say that you have to look at integrating your data more than just a contact center data. You need to look at your CRM data and put it together and look at the story it's telling, really the customer journey. Some people are already doing that. Other people haven't really made that connection yet, but, but really you need to look at all the data, not just the contact center data. Great question, Ginger. It's, I think, something that everybody always poses and thinks about while they're getting together their plans, et cetera, going out. So in my case with CX leaders, I always find that they really need to be looking at not just the digital side, but the voice side and the data that goes into it. And if they don't have the data, they're not going to measure their contact center correctly. They have to have it to manage their SLAs, to manage a better customer experience, to manage workflows. And especially if they're looking into WEM, which is the entire you know suite, we have to look at the WFM, and then obviously we can look at the uh, sorry, the data and text and speech analytics and use those as a frame for collecting even more data to even have a more of a knowledge base. So very important for these CX leaders. So what's one piece of advice on how CX leaders can get more out of customer data? I would say staff for it. I think you need to hire people and have them do that job and not have it be part of someone else's job, but actually that's their job is to extract meaningful information from the data that they're getting. Uh, one way CX customers or CX leaders can get more information from their customer data would be to, I'd recommend be your own customer. You know, go through, follow what the customer experience is like, see where the pain points are, see what you would want to change if you were your own customer. So I'd recommend just going through the whole process start to finish of what your customer experience is and then go from there, tie the data into that experience. CX leaders can get more value from their custom data by actually using the data. They collect so much information, they have it from so many different sources, so they need to integrate all the data into one source and actually use the data. Uh, it can tell you about trends, it can tell you about patterns that you can take action on. So don't let the data go to waste, actually integrate it, take advantage of it, use it, and find ways to solve customer problems using that data that you have. We also spoke to some other CX industry influencers to get their take on doing more with customer data. And, and we're, oh, oh, yeah, no, go ahead. Yeah. Well, gonna... you know, it's so exciting. There's so much going on, right? So that is going to turn into a blog. So keep an eye out for that on Genesis.com. I can't wait for that blog. And to wrap things up with something special, something else we can't wait for is a guest you had recently on CX Green Room, Luis Ferrardo, who is the CIO of Life Extension. Oh, that conversation was fantastic. So I'm excited to hear what he has to say. Well, speaking of Life Extension, we extended the conversation about this, about his, his CX evolution. And we talked to him earlier about his session here at Enterprise Connect. So we're catching up with Lee's after his session here at Enterprise Connect. So Lee's, you, you talked a little bit about uh, how you went through some implementations, but um, diving a little bit deeper onto it, what are when you're keeping pace, trying to keep pace with, keep track with all the changes, what are some of the things you could, you could advise on how, how we can do that yeah. in, a, in a more managing, managed way, I guess? Yeah, I mean, this is, this is our large implementation, very risky project, so 
I think a good plan is, is the key. Um, uh, we work with our implementation partner and we ask them to provide us with their implementation plan of uh, migration to the cloud with Genesis. That, that's a step number one. Then we looked at that and added our own pieces. Uh, we started with the development integrations that we wanted to do. Uh, we wanted to, the way we wanted to do training, we want the, the implementation partner to train our trainers so that we can deliver the trainer to our training to our agents. Uh, different areas that you review, create a draft plan. And then the other thing we did is from very early on, we decided on the go live date. And we had that, that in mind, we were really aggressive actually. Our go live were, went from day one to, to go live in less than 90 days. Uh, so we picked the go live date and, and, worked, uh, and worked backwards. Okay, when do we need to do training? When to do, and we, how are we gonna do it, uh, the, the development team? So we created this robust plan and the key for that of course is uh, weekly meetings with implementation partner, other meetings with our teams. Uh, and you definitely need a, a champion, somebody, whether it's your project manager or somebody that understands the business, the technology, to really di drive this project forward. There is going to be a lot of unknowns for as much as you want to plan at front. There is going to be things that we're going to learn along the way. How are we going to migrate our toll-free numbers? Okay, what is the plan for that? Uh, okay, we might need to talk to vendors and understand their, their deadlines. So how much does it take to do a porting of a number? So account for all those things and come up with a plan, not only the implementation, but the migration. And I think that's the key, a really good plan. What's the biggest surprise takeaway from all, from your implementation, from everything you learned from this one? What was the thing you walked away and thought, wow, that really worked out great for us? Yeah, to, to be honest with you, this time uh, we were really successful uh, because we had lessons learned from a previous uh, failed implementation with another vendor. So we came with this new implementation with lessons learned that we definitely applied. Um, so the project went smooth, you know. Um, there were some obstacles, some risks into, okay, we're gonna have a short period of time to do the integration. We're gonna have this um, uh, migrations that we need to do. There were some, some unknowns, but we had a really good plan uh, already, a lessons learned that we were able to apply and be successful. It takes a solid team to do this, right? And so, what are some of the things you could tell us about uh, cross-functional teamwork? What are some of the uh, lessons you can give us on, on how yeah. that can be improved? Yeah, in a, in a perfect world, you want to have a, a company culture and environment where we're all one company, one team working together towards a, to ours, a, a common goal. Um, if there are challenges with uh, people, personalities, that, that is definitely going to be an obstacle. I'm, I was fortunate enough not to, not to have to deal with these problems. Uh, not to say it was all perfect, but we were very clear on the direction, the business, the IT department working together in one direction. So trusting your people, listening to your people, respect. All ideas are good ideas. Um, that's how a project is successful and, and you have fun doing it. It's not, an, even though an, it's an a stressful time, and the risks are high, uh, but if you create a, an environment where people can have a good time, uh, that's, a, that's a good project to, to be in. I'm glad you had a good time with that. That yeah. sounds great. Speaking of good times, we're here at Enterprise Connect. Lots of trends, lots of hot topics going around. What are the, the ones that you're looking at and you're excited about implementing in the future? And it's okay to say something about AI. <laughs> we know it's going to come up. What, yeah. what are some of the things you're looking forward to? Yeah, I definitely hate to, to repeat myself uh, hearing the AI, but I mean, putting the AI aside, again, it starts with a business problem. What, what are the things that you're trying to resolve for, for your employees, for your customers? And uh, AI definitely has a lot of potential. Uh, we look at, um, for example, taking our knowledge base. We are a science company. We have a lot of health information, and we use that information to answer our customers' questions, whether those are live on a call or to answer emails. Uh, so all that searching, traditional searching, turning to Gen AI searching, where you get a, a knowledge article or a, a summarized answer, it's still the search results. Now applying those to uh, a, a voice interaction, where you can take that and, and, and feed that into your agents with a, a agent assist capabilities, or take that same knowledge and make it part of your digital experiences with bots, maybe automation of some processes and all that. So there are a lot of opportunities and we're definitely looking at all uh, so that's, that's, uh, that's what we are excited about. You know, it's about getting it right. So it's very important to get it right, and if that can assist you with getting it right, yeah. that's what it's all about. And speaking of getting it right, I know with CX Green Room, 
we supply s snacks or treats to everyone that comes on the show. So awesome. you get some branded M&Ms that, Excellent. you know, they got the, the Genesis Orange ones are delicious. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Well, we covered a lot of ground today. We've got to meet with a lot of interesting people that have a lot of great information. Also, speaking of information, we recorded an episode of Tech Talks in 20, which will be available very soon for you to listen to. So thank you so much for joining us today in the CX Green Room for this special edition mashup of CX Green Room and Tech Talks in 20. We'll see you next time. Thank you.